Amen. They are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God is good all the time. Amen. Amen. He's good. He's good to us. Amen. You know, we, we uh, a number of years ago, in fact, before 9-11, the Lord gave me a scripture. He, he burned it in my heart. And 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, This know also in the last days, peerless times shall come. You know, most of us don't know when the last days started. But we've been in, living in the last days from the birth of Jesus Christ till now. That, that we're living in the last days and we're living in the last little sliver of time before the coming of the Lord. And I don't want to minister to you this morning about the ultimate sign of the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in Matthew 24, Jesus begins to, uh, to tell his disciples, they ask him, Lord, what will the signs of your coming be? And Jesus names a number of things, but the ultimate sign is the preaching of the gospel to the world. In, in Matthew 24, 14, it says, And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall come the end. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful today for your many blessings of life. Lord, we thank you that we are so blessed. Lord, we are blessed to live in a country where we're still free. We're able to worship you in spirit and truth. That we're able to assemble together, Lord God, to call upon you, Lord, to hear the word. Lord, we thank you that you help us to be, Lord God, those who will carry the gospels to the four corners of the earth. Lord God, that we'll be a part of your great mechanism in these last days to send the gospel, Lord, that every person, Lord, every person that lives in a city, a town, or hamlet will be able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we give you praise, Lord, for it in Jesus' name. Amen. We're thankful for you that are here today. If you're visiting, uh, if it's your first time, if you'll lift your hands, we want to say thank you for coming. You know, uh, over the last year and a half, I mean, I don't, if you've been in the world, you've noticed that uh, we've been under tremendous change. Uh, our world in the last year and a half, America has changed until it's almost unrecognizable. There are things that have happened. And, uh, you know, the world still has great needs. You know, uh, two Wednesday nights ago, we had the missionaries here, and they were talking about the needs in the area that they minister. They've had flooding, and so uh, the crops were destroyed, and, and people are hungry uh, for, for natural food and, and just anything that you can give them, they, uh, they cherish it. It's important to them. Brother Mark talked about, you know, the graham crackers covered with uh, chocolate. Well, you know, it is amazing that almost on every corner, there, there's a place where you can get food. You know, uh, the grocery store right up the road here, you know, they run those coolers 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just thinking you might want to come in and get some milk. They keep milk cold. We, we live in a wonderful country. You know, we are blessed. We are so blessed. A number of years ago, my wife and I were uh, privileged to go to the Ukraine and minister there. And uh, we, they, they had at that time come out of uh, the, the Soviet rule, but uh, they were adapting to, I guess, Western life. And so we went in one of the old commissaries that they used to have. And I mean... Uh, it reminded me uh, when I was a kid of the little store we had in our community. There wasn't much there. And uh, then we went to the, the more sophisticated department stores, and it was like the stores in the 50s. You know, they had things on the first level and the second level. You know, they had the women's clothes mainly on the first level. The second level and the third level, as you went up the elevator, it, it progressed. That's the way things were in the 50s. Today, you know, we're used to malls, and today so many people, they, they shop online. You know, you can find anything you want online. You go online, and if you look it up, you can find it. Uh, so it's readily available. But we live in a country where that's possible. But so many people don't have that privilege and advantage today to do that. We, we are a blessed people. Amen? But, you know, it is that we need to share our blessings with others that we, we need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, we, we have seen so many things that have happened. You know, uh, we, we have people from over 50 nations that are storming our southern border. And, and our border patrols overwhelmed with, with the, the, the prospect of, of trying to stop that. You know, uh, and it, as I said, there are many needs. 
There are multiple people in the world that need healing. Many, many years ago, I was privileged to go hear Brother T.L. Osborne. He was in his 90s. And he made a statement. He said, you know, I would rather minister in a foreign country than America. And the reason is because there are so many alternatives in America. You know, if you have a headache, you can, you can take some aspirin. That's not available everywhere in the world. You know, if you have a serious ailment, you will live with that till you die. And he said, in those places, they have one alternative. It is receive their healing from Jesus Christ or die. And uh, I have, I have uh, books in my library that, that shows mass meetings they had back in the 40s and, and 50s after the war that people were hungry for the, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. In our own country, after the Second World War, there were people that had been damaged by war. People had all kinds of ailments. And uh, the great healing ministry uh, transpired during that time. I remember as a kid, you know, being a little fella, my dad uh, liked one of these evangelists and we used to sit in front, and my sister can remember that, sit in front of the real, real tape and listen to him preach message. And uh, my dad had several of those tapes, you know, because people were looking for something. They were looking for the power of God uh, that, that would change the lives of individuals. You know, my grandfather, uh, who was 92 when he passed away back in the 80s, uh, you know, he saw things from the horse and buggy uh, to people being on the moon. He saw a lot transpire in his time. But he was telling me that years ago that they would be in their, their meeting, what we call a council meeting, district council, we used to have that. Uh, we still have it today, but they don't have it happen. And they would be praying, interceding, and people walk in off the street fall on the altars and give the heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I don't know why I'm doing that, but I, I, I'm impressed of God. I'll tell you a funny little story. There, there was a minister. Now, this is back in the days of uh, Hoot Gibson and those guys. You probably don't even know who Gibson was. And the silent uh, movie days. And so this preacher, he walked by and he saw the advertisement for this Western and, and he wanted to go. And... Uh, you know, he kept going back and forth and back and forth. And finally, he bought a ticket and went in. Well, the lady that sold the ticket saw he was awful suspicious, so they called the police. And the police came in and drug him out of the theater and arrested him. And he had to call down to the meeting for people that knew who he was. He was embarrassed because he'd went to a movie. Now, the worst thing ever happened in those movies besides shooting somebody in the hand is they kissed the horse. You know, and, uh, and he was embarrassed to be there. But you know, times have changed. Things have changed today. We live in a different world. Jesus said in the last days there would be wars. Well, right now, there are at least uh, nine wars that are taking place. You don't hear about them. Because right now, the things that are happening in Afghanistan is, is sucking all the air. Everything is focused on Afghanistan because we have Americans. And it's a, it is an embarrassment and a tragedy to see what has happened to our country. And we've left all this equipment over. Jesus said there'd be wars. Well, there's wars that are taking place right now. Our, our own government is, is bombing in Syria right now. There was a special service guy that said, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but we're still bombing in Syria right now. And he named another place where we have armed troops that are involved in, in, in skirmishes. There are wars that are going on. Jesus said there'd be wars. You know, we have had two world wars where the entire uh, planet was uh, in, involved in war. Every nation uh, had a part in it. You know, some of them said, I'm neutral, but they took the, you know, the proceeds uh, to help one side uh, to take care of the money. It's all about the money. You know, in the Second World War, we had, uh, you know, the Axis and the Allies. Well, you know, the, the nation of Japan was allied with Adolf Hitler, but they, they didn't have the same uh, philosophy that Hitler had. But he was using them. You know, it is that, that war uh, changes nations. And, uh, you know, the nation, the little nation of Africa, Afghanistan is going to change. It's going to fall under the, the caliphate. And uh, it's all part of the end times. Those things had to be. Didn't have to be the way we left there, but that's the way we left. And the sad thing is, there are going to be Americans who are going to be left in there because there's no way to get them out without going into a full-scale war. Jesus said that there, there would be 
pestilence. Well, we, we understand that. We have people in our congregation that have had the, the COVID virus. People have died from that. I went to a funeral last uh, Saturday before last, went to a, a funeral Saturday, and, and it's all because uh, of that people, they, they got this pandemic, this disease, and it killed them. You know, uh, we have a lady back there that's involved in the hospital and others, Sister Amy can tell you that, that, that people are dying daily from that disease. It is, it is uh, whether it was leased on purpose, you know, it was developed. And, and, you know, we have people in our own government was involved in developing that, that's developing a foreign country. Now, whether it got out by accident or whether it was released on purpose, who knows? But still, the, Jesus said in the last days that there would be pestilence. So, so we see that worldwide. Not only that, you know, that's just one disease that's affecting. You know, when my, I had a, my mother had a sister that died, what, what was called a whooping cough. Well, today, that's pretty well eradicated, but I don't know if you've seen it or not, but they have, a, they have a commercial on TV. It's called pertussis, but it's what they used to call the hooping call. It's made a return. There's a resurgence of diseases. Jesus said in the last days, these things will happen. You know, it is that, that famine. You know, that's why I said we had the missionaries here. And they were talking about just a little handful of beans, a little handful of rice, uh, that, that people were begging on the streets for that. We don't think anything about it. You know, after church, most of us are going to the restaurant and, and uh, decide what we want. But that's not worldwide. That's here in America. It's limited. But there are people in the world that are starving because there's famine in the land. Uh, it may be because of natural disaster. It may be because of the government uh, that's in charge. But there's famine in the land. There's lack. You know, there's necessity in our country. I, I have a brother-in-law that has sold cars, I guess, ever since he uh, got out of, of high school. And they only have two cars, two new cars on their lot to sell because they cannot get the chips to build the cars. And so, you know, that just mushrooms, if you go back up, the people that make the cars, well, you know, they have to lay off people because you can't pay people to do nothing. You know, our government can do that for a while, but you can't do that. Uh, somebody's in a business that they have investors, they're looking at the bottom line and they don't want it to be very long that they're not making a profit. So people get laid off. You know, Jesus said in the last days they would be earthquakes. Well, you know, a, a number of weeks ago, we saw a building collapse and, and many hundreds of people were killed because of the collapse. Uh, because uh, it collapsed, there's a little bit of an earthquake there. Well, we had an earthquake that just happened down in Haiti and, uh, you know, the Samaritan Purse is advertising they're down here. Well, how many of you know this? That there are 55 earthquakes, not every year, not every month, but every day. Every day. Now, some of them, you have to have a seismic uh, instruments to record them because they're only two or three. But every day there's at least, on average, there's 55 earthquakes could take place in the world. They have become commonplace. In the 1970s, uh, worldwide, there were 7,000 earthquakes, 6.0 or above. In the 1990s, there were 19,000 of them, and it's increasing uh, every day. Every day that passes, why? Because the earth is groaning for the revelation uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus named a number of other things. We don't have time to go into those. But he said the number one sign that you will recognize before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is this gospel will be preached. Amen. The preaching of the gospel. You know, we're, we're a little group of people here today. You know, there are people that that they won't come. You know, some of them have a lady that's over 100 years old. Well, I can understand she doesn't want to come. Uh, you know, most anything affects her health. Uh, yeah, I pray for her weekly. I talk to her weekly. Uh, her daughter's in the hospital, uh, has a disease. But, you know, she's been well. I remember when she came to the church, we were in the old church. And uh, she wanted to join the church. And, and she said, at that time, she was on 12 medications, but the Lord has taken her off of those. She's got healed of those diseases that cause that condition in her life. Brother Joe, he's 91 years old. Well, he has to take uh, precautions because, you know, uh, the flu could uh, adversely affect him. So we understand. But, you know, we have young people. 
how that are healthy. They don't come because they're afraid. You know, there's a spirit of fear that's in our country. Now, Jesus said, you know, when he comes, there'll still be people on earth that need a healing. There'll be people in, in, in diverse places that will need healing. That there, there are people uh, today, the greatest need of mankind is to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said before he come, the world will be able to hear the gospel. Uh, they will hear the gospel preached to him. I'm way off on my notes, but I want to I read, read something to you. Oh, in 1987, I'll give this to you. This is a prophecy was given in 1987. How many know that was a long time ago? 1987. And, and here's what it said. And, and so it is that the church shall stand tall in this hour and shall stand big in this hour and rejoice in, its, in His power. We rejoice in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ because the Bible says we're overcomers. We're victorious because of what Jesus has done for us. That, that we are the body of Christ. You know, Jesus is uh, seated at the right hand of the Father, but we're seated there with Him. The Bible says we're, we're made to sit together with Him in heavenly places in Christ, and we have authority in the earth. And, and here's, as He continued, said, I looked, I looked and I saw the hearts of men, and they were deserved, disturbed and perplexed. And I saw a black, dark cloud arise from the eastern part of our nation. And it came out of the capital of our nation. And men responded unto the darkness that arose and, and walked with it. And that darkness began to envelop the very land. But the hearts of many that know God sense in their spirit that those of us who stand on the horizon of time will sound a warning. There shall arise the mighty ones, those called of God, separated unto him, and they shall make intercession. And the light shall shine and drive back the darkness, and the evil and wicked men shall fall. Well, we certainly live in a time of great confusion. You know, people are confused because you can't believe what you're told today. You know, our government tells us one thing, then they tell us something else. Our media tells us one thing, and then they tell us something else. And it's confusion. You know, uh, wear a mask. Don't wear a mask. Uh, I take the va uh, va uh, vaccine. Don't take the vaccine. This helps. That helps. And it is confusing. People are, are, are disgusted about the things that are happening in the world, that, that we're losing the prestige of being the greatest nation on earth, and uh, we're, we're relegated to a third world country. You know, we, we had to have had people that fought in that theater in Afghanistan. And, and, you know, they're incensed by what's happening. You know, we have a flag that's uh, out in the hallway that was uh, flown over the embassy uh, in, uh, in Afghanistan. Brother Andy, who's not here this morning, uh, that, that he was part of the security detail there. That doesn't exist anymore. They flew the flag out. You know, it is that the world is rapidly changing. Why? Because the enemy realizes that his time is short. You know, the time to work for Jesus is short. There's a group of people that believe that Jesus is coming during the Feast of, of Trumpets. Well, that may be true. If that's true, we have less, about two weeks to work. Because the Feast of Trumpets is uh, the 6th and 7th of September. So we can rejoice, we're going home. Well, that'd be good. He could come, hallelujah. I, I'm not saying that's not right. And I, I'm saying they may be on to something because I believe the Lord will come during the Feast of Trumpets. But it might not be till next year or the year after that. You know, 10 years is a short period of time. My little granddaughter's 10 years old. And uh, we got pictures of her as a little girl. She's, I'm the little sister. She's grown. She's grown up in 10 years' time. You know, 10 years is a short period of time. I'm not saying the Lord's coming in 10 years. He might come in five years. He might come in two and a half weeks. But here's the thing to know is that the Lord is coming. And before he comes, he said, this gospel shall be preached. Now, that doesn't mean that, that, that everywhere, you know, in every little nook and cranny of the earth, it means where people gather. Major cities all over the world are going to have access to the gospel of Jesus Christ. This gospel shall be preached because there are going to be people on earth that will never know Jesus came the first time. That's the reason the Lord's going to send missionaries out 
to tell them the good news. You know, we, we had uh, uh, the Holloways were down in South America. They moved to Peru, which they got out of the frying pan, jumped in the fire. Peru. Every day they have people from all over the world that come and they offer sacrifices to, to, to other gods. And they found in Peru, uh, you know, they were looking at one site and found underneath. There's a tunnel under there. And uh, there, there is a, a replica of the underworld. And they used to they, uh, uh, anoint the high priest down there. Yeah, it's a terrible thing. Well, they were in Peru or they were in Brazil for a number of years on the rivers. And, you know, there are natives that live there. They don't want anybody encroaching. You know, you come, they may think that you're the meal for the night. I mean, they, they still, uh, they're, they're carnivorous. They, they are headhunters. And uh, they're fierce. Why? Because they don't want you to encroach. A number of years ago, about two years ago, somebody ended up on an island. And uh, I think it was in the Pacific, this island, and the natives killed them. And somebody went in there and drug, drug the body. They let him come take the body out of there. But they don't want anybody in there. You know, so there would be places where they never hear about Jesus. But by and large, that's not true. You know, a time passed when the missionaries, when the missionaries would go to a foreign country, they packed their belongings in, their, in the coffin they'd be buried in. Now, you, th you think about that. You got a coffin and you put all your worldly belongings in that because you're going to be buried in that box. That'll make you decide whether you want to be a missionary or not. You know, God may be calling me to pastor somewhere in Arkansas or Utah rather than going to the foreign field. And many of them paid the ultimate price for their life. You know, they have a film about uh, some missionaries that went down in uh, South America. And uh, the natives, they killed them. Their wives went down later and, and won a lot of those people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Their husbands paid the price. They went down and, and they were sacrificed. They killed them. And they told them, don't you go? They went with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus and they changed those people. You know, the gospel changes people. It is the gospel that changes people. You know, Paul said that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It is that, that the weapons we have, we don't have guns and we don't have tanks because we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against fallen angels that are in positions of authority. You know, the apostle Paul talks about that there are principalities, powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's, that's fallen angels that have taken a position that belong to man. Now, I told you last Sunday, when man fell, he fell below fallen angels. He became the servant of fallen angels. The devil rules over this earth. The authority that God gave to Adam, he gave it to the devil. People say, well, why is the world the way it is? It's because the devil's running things. And the only one that can stop him is the body of Christ. You've been given all the equipment that you need. You know, Jesus went to the, the, the land of the Gadarenes. And they, they had a man that they, they tried to put chains on and he broke the chain. And they couldn't tame him. So they just, they, they stayed away from that area. And if it went down in the daytime, you know, they, they, they watched out. Somebody was a watchman in case you need to run because that crazy guy lives in, in, in the tombs. And so Jesus rolls up and his disciples are with him and that guy comes running out of the tomb toward Jesus. Now, I'm thinking that the, the uh, disciples probably have that thing paddled out and said, come on, Jesus, he's going to get you. But Jesus stood his ground. And the Bible says when they found him, he was in his right mind kneeling at the feet of Jesus, and he wanted to go with Jesus. Why? Because Jesus changed his life. He, he, he you know, the, the Bible says Jesus spoke to that spirit in him, and he said, we're, we're a legion. We're many. And Jesus said, come out. They said, whoa, 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 whoa. How about we go in that herd of pigs over there? Jesus said, if that's where you want to go, go. Now, they had to go. They had to go. You know, it was, un, it was against the law for the Jews to have anything to do with the hog. 
That was part of their dietary. Well, who were they raising for? For the Romans. Romans, they, they ate that, so they're making good money, selling it to the Roman soldiers. And to the other people didn't believe in that. And Jesus said, that's all right. You can go into those hogs. And the Bible says those hogs ran down a steep hill and they all drowned. And what happened to the spirits? They went back to the dry place. Because the Bible says when the spirits cast out, he goes to the dry place. You know, the, the, the devil wants to have expression through a human body. And it comes to oppress people. You know, there, there are so many people today that are oppressed by the devil. That's the reason they have all these problems. You know, uh, a lot of people on medication today because they're under oppression. They're, they're trying to relieve the oppression they are by taking a pill. And, uh, you know, that really doesn't help them because the pill wears off. And that spirit is still there. Now, I'm not saying everybody, don't misunderstand, everybody has a problem, is not uh, oppressed by the devil. But oppression is the most common thing the devil can. The devil will oppress you as a Christian if you allow him. That's the reason that, that we, uh, we stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is, is, is smart because he's been around a long time. That's the reason that, that God was upset in the day of Noah because people lived to be 900 years old. People say, well, I don't believe that. Well, they lived to be 900 years old. And God said, uh, because of this, their, their days will be 120 years. That's significant. I don't have to go into that. But, but you know, most people, they, today the mean average uh, uh, lifespan is about 77. There are some people that live to be 100. Some, there have been a few people who live to be 122 and then they die. They don't live beyond the 120-year mark. That's, a, that's the most that you live. Your quality of life diminishes. Your body uh, begins to deteriorate because its body was not made for eternity. But God has supplied us one. There's one waiting for us that we're going to lay down this one. The Bible says this. Paul says the dead in Christ shall rise first and that we which are alive and remain will be changed in a moment and a twinkling eye. One minute, you know, you may be getting up and going to work, but you're going to be changed by the power of God and you're going to be caught up together with the Lord. You know, Jesus was raised from the dead. He wasn't the only one raised from the dead. You read the word, the Bible says there were others who were raised from the dead. Can you imagine those Jews? They had buried Uncle so-and-so last week and he came to see them and, and they were saying, whoa, freaking out. He said, no, touch me, I'm, I, I, I got a new body. You know, it is that, that God is going to give us a new body. It's coming. But we live in an age that the ultimate sign of the return of Jesus Christ is this gospel shall be preached. Well, as I said, days passed. People packed up their belongings in a coffin and they went overseas. And they preached the gospel and they died in country. But it's a different story today. Now we still have some people that they pay the ultimate price for serving the Lord Jesus Christ. But by and large, it's not that way because we live in a uh, an age of technology. Today, you know, people that plow with an oxen, now that's primitive to us. They, they got one hand on the plow and the other hand they got a cell phone. My wife remarked this morning, people standing in line in Afghanistan and they all have a cell phone. There are over 5 billion cell phones in the world. There's only about maybe 7 billion people, and that's counting little ones, in the earth. That's only about 7 people, billion people on earth, and there's 5 billion cell phones, and there's probably more than that because they're making them every day. I've had two or three. They wore out. The one I had before this one, I loved it. i just gotten used to it. And it played out. Uh, you know, uh, I, you could hear me talk, but I couldn't hear you. And they don't fix them. So I had to get a new one. And I didn't get the newest version. version and I don't like this one. Because you've got to wave your hand. And if you don't wave it right, it, don't, it just sits there and looks at you like, hey, stupid. <laughs> you know? And, 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 and it just aggravates me to no end. Because I hadn't gotten used to it. But today, the world, see, we have cell phones, the internet. The internet's all over the world. You have television. 
You have a radio. We have the radio stations here. But a number of years ago, he's gone on to glory. Now, there was a minister that invested in shortwave radios to, pre- to spread this gospel all over the world. Brother Lester Summerall. I remember a quick story. Brother Summerall, God got on him one time about he needed a, t- he needed a television show. So he, he uh, paid the money to have a television show. And he's ministering the gospel and he called for healing. The little boy had a club foot. I mean, it turned completely backwards. And God instantly healed that boy and his foot went for that. And the station manager came in and said, here's all your money back. We can't have you. We can't have you. We can't have that on our program. We will be sued. Here's your money. We, we're through with you. Well, that made Brother Summerall, now he's a different kind of guy. He is happy. He said, see there, Lord, I told you that they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't let us have a TV program like that. You know what God said? That's all right, Lester. We'll just buy our own station. Because God always has an answer. God always has an answer. You know, today you have Google and Facebook and Twitter. They're trying to get in the, uh, the They want to supply their, their instruments to the Asian market because there's a million people in China. A million, million and a half people in China, I believe it is. And they're trying to get into China. Well, you know, when they get into China, there's somebody going to figure out how to get the gospel in. You know, on Facebook, you know, you can record and you can talk to people. Well, you know, there's people going to tell them about Jesus. There, there, there are so many instruments to preach the gospel. We live in the last sliver of time before the Lord focuses his attention. He's coming for the church and he's going to focus his attention on the nation of Israel for seven years. The Lord's about to come. Now, it won't hurt my feelings any if he comes on, on the 6th or 7th of, of September. Hallelujah. You know, I want to be like Paul. I, I, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. But I, I really doubt that he's coming then. But the Bible says that we're to occupy. We're supposed to be engaged until the Lord come. You know, today it's sad to say that people think about themselves. We live in the me generation. And we live in a time when, when people have lost, they have lost the vision for lost people. A lot of churches today, they don't ever preach about heaven and they don't preach, they certainly don't preach about hell. When I was a little boy, I mean, they used to preach it so hot you didn't want to sit on the front seat because you'd fall, afraid you'd fall in. And some of you remember that. You know, and I'm not that old. And, uh, you know, it, it was that they preached heaven and they preached hell. Well, you know, heaven's real. That's where I want to go. And, and there's a hell to shun. There, there's a hell that's a reality that people are going to die and go to hell. And, and you know, we have people that go to the prisons and they have been going to the prisons. They can't now to tell people there's a way of escape. You may not get out of a physical prison, but there's an eternal prison that you need to escape and Jesus can make the difference. He makes a difference in our life. The, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. Now with all this preaching of the gospel, we still have opposition because there's still people today in our world, they don't like the gospel. You know, there's a parable that Jesus tells about the wheats and tares. And in that parable, the angels come and they bundle people together. And, uh, you know, there are groups of people that are bundled together. You know, people that, that you know, they, the LBGTQ, XYZ, whatever it's called, they're all together. And, you know, they, they're not in their right mind. You know, they, they, they have been troubled in the man. There's a doctor who says, you know, if you, you make the, the changes in their body, they, if they're a man want to be a woman, then they, they can do things to you and give you hormones and all of a sudden you, you act and look like a woman, but you're really not. Or the vice versa. You're a woman, you want to be a man, they can give you hormones and they can make you look like a man, but you're really not. Because you are what you are. And, and, and it's not a physical thing because when they have that happen to them, 
They still have the same feelings on the inside because it's a mental. They're tormented by the devil to believe the wrong thing. You know, in California, they have a guy that won the decathlon. He was on the Wheaties box. And now, you know, he looked, looked like a woman, somewhat. And he thinks he's a woman. And he's running to be the governor of California. Well, you can do what you want to. But in reality, he's still a man. He's still a man. Because if they get, quit giving him the shots, he's going to revert He'll grow a mustache and he'll grow a beard. And, uh, you know, those features will come white because he's a man. I don't know how I got off on that, but we'll, we'll preach there a minute. Amen. You are what you are. And, and, you know, God made you to be the best that you are. That, you know, we, the, the most important thing is that we get this gospel to the, to the world. In America, it's everywhere. You think everybody in America knows about the gospel of Jesus Christ. nuh uh there are so, so many people that are so ignorant of the Word of God. So ignorant. You know, it is in these last days that, that there are things happening that we never thought that would be possible. You know, in this prophecy, I want to read this to you. Now, this was written in 1987. If I can find it in my notes. Or oh, here it is. And they declared by human reasoning, that is impossible, that, that that cannot be. But yes, saith the Lord of hosts, all things are possible, and the impossible shall become possible. Even many have said, well, it may be possible, but not probable. Yea, even the probable shall come into manifestation, and your heart shall be made to rejoice, and your spirit shall be glad, and the work of God shall be enhanced, and the kingdom of God shall be advanced. Well, today, there's a church within five minutes of the Kremlin. Now, most of us grew up during the Cold War. I can remember being in school and we, we hid under our, 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 our desks because of a nuclear threat. And then they thought, well, that wasn't good, so they loaded us up on a bus the last week of that. Well, there's a man that has, and it's not just any church, it's a full gospel. Tongue talking, Bible believing church within five minutes of the seat of government. There is an underground church in China. Now, before the Second World War, it was above ground. In fact, my wife and I were in Doline long before I pastored the church, and there was a man, you know, when President uh, Nixon uh, reopened China, the Assemblies of God sent him over to find the church. And he said, You know, I found the church. The church was doing well. It just went underground. And the church is doing well. You know, we've had missionaries that are in Asia that they know the church is doing well. Amen. You know, the largest church in the, in the world is not in America. It's not in America. The largest church in the world is in Korea. I have an uncle that was in the Marine Corps that fought uh, in the 1949 and 50 in the Korean War. I had a school teacher that, that he was a Marine, little bitty guy. And uh, he, he fought in the retreat. In fact, I did his funeral. He fought there. You know, the war ravaged that place. But you can tell the difference between the North and South because the Gospels preach and, and the South, man, they're flourishing. They they're have an abundance why? Because the church of the Lord Jesus Christ the gospel is grouper. But up in the north, people are starving to death. People, people don't have, it, it, it's a place of lack. And between, there's, there's a line between. And, uh, you know, if you try to escape from the north to the south, they shoot you. There's been some people that have been successful, but by and large, they don't do that. Why? Because they're afraid to. They know it's certain death to do that the largest church in the world. Who would have ever thought that the largest church in the world would be in Korea? And the pastor has sent missionaries to America. Like we needed missionaries. You know, we support some, some missionaries that, that they're missionaries to America. They're missionaries to the, to the Indians in, in Alaska. To, 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 we call them Eskimos. They're Indians in Alaska. That, that they, they preach the gospel to them. Because, you know, 
uh, they, they're on a reservation, a lot of them. And, uh, you know, they're taking there the wards of the government, and the government takes care of them. And uh, they're not allowed, you know, to, to, to move freely. A lot of them are. And so they preach to those people. This gospel shall be preached. And Jesus said that is the last sign that when this gospel is preached to the whole world, he's coming. Well, we're at the threshold of that happening. Threshold. Of, you know, there are 7,000, uh, a little over 7,000 unreached people group. That's 3.1 billion people. So, whew, that's a lot of people. But you know how rapidly things are changing? That, that the gospel can be preached Years ago, I saw an article in Popular Mechanics of all places that they were talking about the ability to ionize the atmosphere and put up a billboard. In other words, you could advertise Wheaties or, 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 or baking soda in, in, in a foreign country in their language. Now, there's nobody doing that, but you know, that, that's a possibility that that it could be done. You know, if you preach the gospel and people can see in their own language the gospel, the gospel is going to be preached. We're going to leave. And here's the thing. What we do for the Lord, we better do quickly. Today, most people don't give a thought about missions, especially foreign missions. Why should I give my money to somebody I'll never meet? Because when you're in heaven, you're going to meet them. They're, they're going to thank you for sending the gospel because they're in heaven because the gospel came to them. This is not a foreign missions message to get you to give to foreign missions because you already do that. Over the last several weeks, I, I'm so pleased to say that this, this church has given almost $7,000 to foreign missions, to missionaries. Put it in their hand the, to help them. We have an Assembly of God missionary. They didn't go, go through Springfield. They didn't jump through all the hoops. And I understand that. You, know, you don't want somebody on some foreign country and you can't get them out. But they went, they went 28, almost 30 years ago, they went to the field. And they, they, they were green. They didn't know what to do. But the Lord led them step by step. They built 15 churches in Africa. And, you know, they're doing everything they can to raise up indigenous pastors. I have a brother that pastored in Mountain View, Arkansas, but now he's teaching in a Bible school over there to raise up pastors, people with the knowledge of the Word of God, to preach to their own people in their own native tongue. That's all over the world. All over the world. You know, there, there are Christians in, 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 in uh, India a number of years ago, we had a young man came to this church and ministered. You think in India they have maybe one or two languages. I think they have over a thousand different languages in the, in the nation of, Israel, uh, of India. So it's hard to reach people. That, that, but God is making it available that today, you know, a lot of people speak English. A lot of people speak French. I had, a, had a, 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 a cousin of mine that was a missionary uh, in, in Africa, and I thought, you know, well, he was in a modern city like New York. He said, most, most of my people that come to my church, they're either French or British. He said, uh, I don't have many Africans come to my church because it's a big, big city like, like uh, New York. He said, I have an international congregation. Well, you know, all over the world, people are receiving the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the way, greatest way to, to spread the gospel is for what you have in your heart to share with somebody else. So that's what the men and women that go to the prisons, they share what God has done for them. We've had the, the, the people from Teen Challenge come and share what God has done for them. Men and women that God changed their life. Just a few days ago, this young man that used to come to this church was, was killed, tragically killed. And he was in rehab. And, and that poor man, you know, over the years, he's been in one after the other. Because you have to make a connection with Jesus Christ. Going through a program will not change you, but Jesus will change your life. Jesus will change your life. You know, Jesus still heals people. 
But the greatest need that people have is to know Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's, that's, that's the charge we have today. You know, Jesus said to His disciples, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. They tried. I mean, the Apostle Paul, he got, he got mad at John Mark because he thought he was a slacker because Paul is going. He has this revelation. He wants to share it with the world. Well, he did share it because he wrote letters to the churches and we have those letters today and they inspire us and they touch our life because this, Paul didn't re, know the far-reaching plan that God had. But he went, he went, he went, he went. I saw the church in Ephesus. You have to go up steps, what used to be on the ground level. And the church was about half this size, packed with people in, in the church of Ephesus. Well, you know, we have churches of, uh, uh, of three and four, 5,000 today that eclipse. But, you know, it comes from people that share the gospel. Because when you share the gospel, the lives of others are changed. I won't go where you go. You know, you work in places, I, yeah, I'd be a stranger there. They wouldn't know me, but they know you and they trust you. There are people that come to you and say, will you pray for me? I have a need. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous avails much. Well, you were made righteous. Because the Bible says, he that knew no sin was made to be sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. You, you're not righteous, but God covered you with the, with the cloak of righteousness, and so you wore righteous clothes. I want to close with this. You know, there's a story where they bring the woman... And she caught in the very uh, in the midst of adultery. Interesting, they didn't bring the man, but they bring the woman. And they, they asked Jesus, "Well, the law of Moses says we're supposed to stone her. What do you say?" And the Bible says, Jesus says, uh, "He that is without sin can cast the first stone." And he's right. And one by one they leave. And when he gets up from writing whatever he wrote in the sand, he may have just been doodling, he looks around and he says, where are your accusers? He says, neither do I accuse you, go and sin no more. You know, the only person in that crowd that could have thrown a stone was Jesus because he's the only one that was without sin. He that is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Jesus, Jesus could have said, we'll, we'll stone her and I'll cast the first stone. The Bible says Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Wow, the world's already condemned. He came to save the world. He came that through him we might have life and have it more abundantly. Through the grace of the Lord Jesus, by grace are you saved. God's love and favor for you that he said, I will save you. If you receive Jesus Christ, my son, as your personal savior, then his death will cover you. I preached last week about the two trees. It wasn't about the trees. It was about the rebellion against God. And in the garden, Jesus refused to rebel against God. He got nailed to a tree as the ultimate sacrifice for man's sin. It revolved around the tree. But Jesus, Jesus took our sin. I want you to stand with me. We're going to close this service. If you've never received Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior, you're watching this uh, telecast on YouTube, I want to give you the opportunity to receive Jesus Christ. And if you'll pray this from your hearts, based on Romans 10, 9, and 10, the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. Say this with me. Dear Lord Jesus, I recognize I'm a sinner. I come to you. I accept you. I receive you as a sacrifice for my sin. I thank you for my forgiveness. I thank you. You bore my sin. Oh, I thank you, Lord, that I'm accepted in you. And now, because I've received you, I'm saved. I'm saved because of your blood and because of your word. 
I believe your word. Everything that I've done is put under your blood. I'm saved and delivered in Jesus' name. Amen.